Hi, welcome to Learn and Flutter. And we are in section four called Flutter Basic. This video is part four in section four. And today we're gonna to be looking at the padding widget. As before, I would like to start with a new application. So we're gonna be creating a new Flutter app for part four. So we're gonna say create, Flutter create, and we wanna do part four. And I explain in part three why I'm creating a new application each time, because if we don't, then when we compile and upload our application to our device, it's gonna still have like part one or whatever we're, if we just copied it. Uh, if you wanna save some space as we go along, uh, working on these example, go to the previous parts, for example, part three, and go to the previous part. Uh, all right, so I didn't go into that directory yet. Let's go to part three and let's do flutter, F L U T T E R flutter clean. And this will remove the build directory if it's there. And that's going to save you some space, as I illustrated when we did part three, I believe, how much space is wasted there. So I'll go back up and then I'll go to part four. And so we work on part four today. And so I'll just start my Visual Studio Code editor in this directory. Now I already have my simulator running. So where do we want to start? Well, as we know, main.dart is pretty much the entry point for our application. And what I'd like to do today is remove all of this good stuff, everything that's here, this guy. And instead, I'll start with a basic main application. So at this point, we're not even using the material imports, but I'll leave it there. And so what I want to do is assume that, let's say I have an array of um, name, right? It's a list of strings. So for example, I'll say var names, for example, is equals to, okay. So this is a list of strings and I can easily print this out as, you know, names. Now, for a good part of this video, uh, not most of it, but most of it probably, um, is not going to be about Flutter. And you'll see why before I talk about the pad padding widget, I want to cover some of this Flutter um, Dart stuff. So right now we're just doing pure Dart stuff. So um, let's uh, run this code, see what it looks like. So, and uh, what does it say? Man, okay. Okay, dark UI show, blah, blah, blah. So uh, this try to actually run as a Dart application. And I do not want it to do that. So let me comment this out. And let's rerun it again. So run code. And so there it is. Okay. So notice the square brackets around um, the names that I've printed out. And so there are other ways we can print this out. So the print function here knows how to print a list. But if we wanted to print each element or item of that array on a separate line, we can do something, for example, a traditional for loop like var i is equals to zero, i is less than names that length, and this would be the length of the array, or that list, sorry, i plus plus, and we do something like this, and then we can do print, and then I can do like names of i, for example, plus, and let's do something like this. Okay, and so this is yet another way of printing it out. And so far, I'm not doing anything terribly interesting. And you're probably wondering, why am I doing this? You know this sort of stuff already. So that's the result. Okay, um, uh, let's clear that. Another yet another way of printing this out is to do something like for var n, for example, in this list of names. And then we do something like this, we print and name um, n plus dash and then two, for example, right? And this is also another way in which I can print out these elements of the list. And you can see that that appears at the bottom. Um, also, <laughs> uh, there are some other options. We can say names that for each, for example, and for each takes a function. And so we can look and we can see it for each takes a function f. And what is the signature of that function s? f? The function f doesn't return a value, it's a void function, and it simply accepts 
a parameter called e and so you can do whatever so you can see it how for each applies this function to each element okay and so we can do a variadic we can do an anonymous function here so we can say we take a value n and we do fat arrow to means that all um, we're going to write an anonymous function or what people might call a closure and we can say okay let's pass that to print for example and we want to have a nice print that looks pretty much like what we had before so we can do something like this and so let me save and format that and of course clear my screen and rerun and bear with me i'm getting somewhere i'm getting i'm getting to a point so i just want to show you evolution okay and so that's one way of doing things and so there's these ways so what i've done here the result pretty much look the same okay but you can also create a new list that is a result of manipulating the previous list so for example instead of me calling print first i can actually um, manipulate these values or create these new string values and then put them into a new collection so let me show you what i mean i can say names that map for example and let's just put semicolon at the end of map and we can look at the map function we can see that f is a function that takes a parameter e but this is not a void function this function returned t and so t doesn't have to be the same type as e there are two different types so what does that mean it means then that we can do something like this we can say we have a anonymous function again that takes the parameter n which is the element from each element this anonymous function is going to be called for each element so it almost look like for each but the difference is is that it returns a value now since this is an inline function um, we don't our closure we don't have to do use the actual word return but we just simply the value that we want to return and so the value we want to return is this okay so this function is very simple function just one line if it was multiple line I could put close parentheses and do a lot more work but this simply means take this as a parameter and this is the statement that uses that parameter and evaluate to a new value now if we run this now we wouldn't actually see any new output because what we've done is we've simply computed some new values but we haven't done anything with it as you can see the map function returns itself returns another iterable which you can think of as a collection and so we can save that or just go print it directly so we can do something like this and so okay actually let's do this let's create, save it in a new variable called names var names two is equals to and let's save this in there and semicolon and then i can print out names two okay so now that i've have that done and i can clear the screen and rerun it so we're just still doing dart um, getting to a point you'll see how padding widget come fits into this and so notice how this result is different than this okay this uses square bracket this uses parentheses so this is an iter iterable or a collection I like to think of it as like a tuple and so it's a sequence of values but or a set of values rather more accurately but it's not a list okay if we want to turn what we have into a list we can do some we can say that we want to convert our iterable to a list by simply doing to list and if we clear the screen and rerun this now you can see that we have a list okay so now i'm ready to show you some dart code because what we can do then is if we wanted to create a set of widgets from a list we can use something like map and then to list to create that list why might we want to do this if we're using something like a column so let's do that so for now since you already know this I'm gonna delete all of this get rid of that and then I'm going to change this back into a fat arrow and say that oh, we're doing run app and run app requires a widget which is going to be our application so we can do my app 
and I'll do that. And since we know this stuff already, so I'll clear this and close it. I'll do clash my app, or rather, uh, let's do stateless widget. There we go. And my app. So we've created a stateless widget before. It's just a widget that a new class that extends stateless widget, and we are required to provide the implementation or return the widget that we want to build from in this build method. And so this is a container, but we know how to use the column widget. So let's use that. And well, actually, let's start off very even simpler than that. We know to use the text widget and we can give it a value. So let's call it, uh, let's call it names, for example, zero. And we know it always will not work until we give it a text direction. So, so let's do direction and text direction. And so we, we're going to do left to right. Now, let me save this. I happen to know that oh, this is going to be too small because we've done this before. So I'm going to do style and I'm going to do text style. And we'll do size. So text style and then font size is going to be like 32. Okay. Uh, so let's run this now and see what happens. So we should now have a valid Flutter application. So I'll pull this down. We don't need that much room. And so what is the padding widget? Well, this is what we're going to be looking at. So you can see a widget that insets its child by the given padding. Uh, it should be sort of clear from the name. When pass layout constraint to its when passing layout constraint to its child, padding shrink the constraint by the given padding, causing the child to lay out at a smaller size. Padding then resizes itself to its child size, inflated by the padding, effectively creating an empty space around the child. Alright, so that's a lot of words. But, and I give you an example here of how to use it, and I encourage you to read this. It's not very complicated widgets, so it's a nice place for us to jump off and keep going. So, if you look, there is Jane up in the corner. Remember, I said to use the first element of that array to create this text. Okay, so we know how this goes. We can wrap text in a column which would center it by default. So I can, I'll select this widget, I'll go over here, and my int um, suggestions, I'll say wrap with column widget. And so that's gonna both center it in the middle of my screen, and because we went through the major access alignment thing already, we know there's a parameter so we can say center and all this other stuff. But my widget J, um, text widget is behind this notch. And so how can I move it down? I can wrap a padding because we just saw that we can put a padding around it. But before I do, notice how my column takes children, and right now I just have one child. But given our little trick that we pulled earlier, where we can create a number of widgets by using the map and turning strings into widgets, right? So our function would take string and return a widget. So let's create a list of text widgets that we can then pass to our column to have it display. So we can call it name list, for example, maybe name list. Um, so var name list, name list is equals to names that map, if you remember. And then we remember that we have to do a function that takes n the name and then produce what? A text, right? A text widget. And so we have all that details below. And then at the end of it, we say to list because we want a list as the result, because why? Children here is a list of widgets. It's not iterator or iterable of widgets. It's a list of widgets. So now that we know that we want text here, well, we can just grab this guy from here to the end here, which is the text, and drop it right here. And so if I save this, okay, um, probably just give myself some space there, and it looks like it's nicely formatted. And so for the widget here, the value that I'm going to put here is not this, is rather name 
list. Okay, so, all right, so that's good. And so there we go. Well, there's only one problem. Instead of using names of zero, I just use n. And so that should refresh in a second. Um, if it doesn't refresh, you just hit this button. And there you go. There is um, a list of our names. All right, so now we have a column is listed from the start. So it's using that by default. And our Jane is hidden somewhere behind there. And even though we know we can address this with a column by changing the major access alignment, what we want to do instead is use padding widget to just to understand how that works. So we can now wrap our column widget, because this is going to be the child. We could have wrapped our text also, but I want to have a few to show you. Um, so we can wrap our column in a new widget. And so we can see wrap in new widget here. Or we can just simply say add padding. Now this is pretty clever. If the widget doesn't have a padding property, it wraps it in a padding widget. But if the widget has a padding property, it just simply add padding, um, add something to the padding field. You will see an example of that when we look at a widget that has a padding property as opposed to you have to wrap it. And so if you notice, Jane is sort of a little peeking out from up there. And that is because we're using only um, eight as our value or edge inset. Like how much should we come in from each ed edge? And notice we're using a constructor function to create a new edge inset value um, that has, because that's what's expected here for padding, is edge inset geometry that describes the padding. And for now, let's just double this. So this is 16. And let's wait and see what happens. Oh, and it's moving down just a little bit. What about 32? Does that move it down enough? And it moves it just enough to be just past that notch. The thing is, you would not want to be doing something like this because every device, you don't know how much the notch is and so on. And so, um, so even though we might be able to keep playing with this until we get this correctly, we'll see that how there's a way for us to handle this nicely with using um, safe area, which is another widget. But that we'll do that when we get into some other things first. Then we'll see how we can take care of this. But it's still good to know about the padding widget because besides saying pad on all sides by 32, do we really need to be padding on the left and right sides by 32? What if we had some really, really long string? All right. So um, if I refresh, as you can see, if we increase the padding, we'll be pushing in on both sides. And maybe we don't really want that. So for example, if I do 16, you'll see it would go back closer to the edge. And that's because it's wrapping, it's applying it to all. So we don't have to use that constructor function. We don't actually use any constructor function, but there are many. So there's all, which applies the value to all sides, top, bottom, left, and right. We can also use just symmetric to say that all we want to apply the padding either vertically or horizontally so of course horizontally would just be left and right and vertically that's where symmetric come from can be up to the top and bottom only and so we might actually want it to offset from the top and then offset from the bottom and we can also you know go ahead and say that all for horizontal we want to do something different maybe 8.0 Give us that flexibility so you can see it just moved over a little bit just now you probably noticed that and we still have other flexibilities too we can say something like we can take that out and we can say only and we can say top for example should be 32.0 um, bottom should be maybe 8.0 or 16.0 and you know left and right or something and you might be more on the right side so this is um, pretty flexible um, you have all kind of ways of being able to use it knowing about a padding widget and just how you can sort of use top left right and bottom um, do come in handy for some things it's not a very good example of how to get around things like notches in devices and for that, there's safe area and media query. We're not going to worry about it now, but I just wanted to introduce you to yet a new widget. 
And this is what we're going to do. We're going to look, this is the basics. So we're going to look at all the things that we need to make a basic application or a decent application. And that doesn't mean covering all the widgets. It just means covering some of the more fundamental widgets in a way is how I think about it. The things that allow you to move things around the screen so um, it can display how you want. And that is going to allow you to write an application. Um, there are, I don't know, hundreds of widgets. We're going to cover the basic ones that allow you to display things, move them around, that sort of thing, um, basic stuff. And so that, like I said, most of this video is going to be about Dart, and I'm sorry about that. But in order to sort of be able to show you one way in which you can create a number of widgets, I, I, that's why I went through the whole four thing. And so it's just a nice, convenient way. And if you didn't know about maps, well, now you know. Um, take care. See you in the next video where we will cover yet another widget towards understanding how to write a Flutter application. Of course, feel free to explore and read the documentation. All right. Bye.